Thank you for joining us here on our live stream at New Birth Christian Center. It is our hope and prayer that this is an exciting, anointed, and revitalizing worship experience for you. When you are able, please be sure to visit us in person at New Birth Christian Center, located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard in the beautiful city of Stockton, California. You can also visit us online through Facebook and our website, newbirthstockton.com. Please be sure to like, comment, and share this video with your friends and family all over the globe. Stay connected to us because with your prayer and support, we can take this wonderful gospel from the neighborhood to the nation. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Hi, I'm Pastor Luanda Ware, and I'd like to welcome you to New Birth Christian Center. Thank you for partnering with us today in worship, praise, and the word. As you begin to prepare to go into worship, I ask you that you begin to position yourself to receive a mighty move from the Lord. Bow your heads with me in prayer. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you that you are allowing us to be in unity separately, God. I thank you for all that you've done in this past week and all that you're endeavoring to do in the week to come. Be with us in the name of Jesus. Now let's begin to collect our minds and our hearts, get ourselves in position as we go into worship. God bless you.
Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God. And we call him, we continue to call him who he is. He's our strength. He's our power. And for that, he's an awesome God. Amen. He's the God who holds our power in his hands. He's the sovereign God. No matter what things look like, no matter how things may even feel, we serve an awesome God.
It is now tithing offering time at New Birth Christian Center. Here at New Birth, we are believers in the complete word of Jesus Christ. His word in Malachi 3 and also Luke 6, among many others, instructs us to give freely and also offers natural and spiritual blessings to those who follow this guideline. At NBCC, we are continuously searching for new ways to meet the needs in our community. Through financial resource, we are able to continuously hold community outreach events and aid providing resource for those who may be in need. If you would like to donate financially to the Ministry of New Birth Christian Center, please visit us online at newbirthstockton.com. If you would like to offer financial support in person, please visit our service on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. or Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard. God bless you and please enjoy the rest of the service. Peace, peace 
in the potter's house. There's peace for the weary mind today. Peace in the potter's house. If you're looking for love, love in the potter's house. If you're looking for love on today, love in the potter's house. If your body's sick, there's healing. There is healing in the potter's house. No matter what it is, there's healing. Healing in the potter's house. And there is deliverance. There is deliverance in the potter's house. There is complete deliverance. Deliver us in the past. You'll find everything, everything you need in the potter's house. You'll find everything you need in the potter's house. You'll find everything you need in the potter's house. You'll find everything you need in the potter's house. The potter wants to put you back together again. Oh, the potter wants to put you back together again. Now, right where you are, if you believe that come on and bless the Lord come on and bless the Lord right there in your life room we've made our living rooms into our life rooms Jesus said I've come that you might have life and that you might have that more abundantly we are excited on today to be with you in your life room I believe that God is doing a work in our homes. And not only is he doing it in our homes, he's doing it first in our homes so he can do it through our homes. In the midst of all this that's going on, we know that God is our very present help in time of trouble. God is our very present help in time of trouble. And we thank him because he is. We've been praying for those who have lost loved ones over these last couple of weeks. Those who we are connected to who have lost loved ones. And we pray God's comfort and peace be yours on today. I lost a long time family friend on this week. When I went to school with, I'm praying for his family and also our sister Cassandra, who lost her sister. We're praying with families on today. You see, for a lot of people, this isn't real until it's real. Understand, this was real the first day we heard about it. We thank God for who he is in the midst of all this that's going on. God remains to be faithful. And we thank him because he is faithful. Somebody just say that. He is faithful. Amen. Uh, real quick, we want you to share if you've not done so already, share some of the, You know, this is the easiest way to invite somebody to be in church with you. is to stop and, and, and just click that share button and bring them to church. Give them an opportunity to be where you are. Uh, G, you see, Jesus, all he needs is two or three. But what would happen if, if, if I was responsible for somebody receiving the Lord and all I had to do was click a button? Take time out. And invite someone into your life room.
Because from your life room, we're inviting them in to your house of God and to the house of God. It's special to me to be in the house. The writer said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You see, I, I believe that scripture is taking on a new meaning for a lot of people in this time. There are some folk that's going to be so excited just to get back in the doors. And we thank God for that. I want to go to the word on today. And I may do this in, in, in two parts. And, uh, or I may preach a little longer today. I don't know how it's going to be done. Uh, but th 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 it really blesses me. You see, when I start talking about the Holy Ghost, uh, it's just, it's just I, I just feel good. It just makes me feel good to talk about the Holy Ghost. We, on, on, on last Sunday, we which was Resurrection Sunday, we talked about the getting up. And remember, we said it doesn't stop there. When we speak of Jesus, we speak of the birth, the life, the death, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension, and the soon coming of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And our heart, I don't like to think about one without thinking about them all. So after we get up, we've got to go up. Because we rise, the Bible says we rise in the newness of life. And we can't have a new life thinking the same old way. There's some things we can't have new until we change our mind about some things. I've got to change my mind about some old things, some old habits. Somebody said they die hard. When you give them to Jesus, he can turn your life around in just a moment. The transforming, the life transforming power of the true and living God. Acts the second chapter. And we're going to begin reading at the first verse. Acts the second chapter and we're going to begin reading at the first verse. And it reads, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Going to be talking about the new man on today a little bit. And in, 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 in these weeks, you're going to hear me uh, refer to the new man and the elevated man. Uh, because we've got to become new before we can elevate. Uh, you know, we, we, we live in the day of fast elevation, quick elevation. You know, they, somebody is saved today, they're a preacher tomorrow, and they're a bishop next week. But not stopping to receive the most powerful gift there is, the gift of the Holy Ghost. I thank God for the gift of the Holy Ghost. I thank God he saved me. And, I, and, and filled me, you see, they used to call it with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. You see, sometimes we don't really understand how precious the gift is because a lot of people don't have it. They're allowed to operate without it. But that precious gift of the Holy Ghost that comes to fill God's people. Oh, what a day when you experience the raw power the true presence of the living God. Now, remember, this was on the day of Pentecost, which at the same time was the celebration of the wheat harvest. Also at this time, remembering the law that was given in Mount Sinai. All this is, is, is being done at this time. And God uses this time to say, I'm about to open up the church. I'm about to allow there to be an explosion, a revival of new creatures. 
I'm about to open the doors and extend the hand of fellowship like never before. I believe in this season, the church is about to go through a revival like never before. I'm not talking about five nights of preaching and shouting. I'm talking about a season where daily people are going to begin to give their hearts and their lives back to God and no church door is going to be open. That makes me feel good. You see, it's not going to be what we have known, but God is saying, I'm going to use this season for my glory. It's going to be for man's good, but it's going to be for my glory. I'm about to open the church. God is about to open his church again for those who have felt left out and shut out and, 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 and outcasted. God is saying it's in this season because you're not going to have the excuse. I don't want to go to that church to receive God. You're going to be allowed to receive him right there in your living room or come back to him. Some are going to have to pull over on the side of the road because they can't contain themselves. They just need to pull over and cry because the presence of God has now fallen on them because they have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into their lives and have made the commitment to follow Jesus for the rest of their days. What a mighty God we serve. When you get the right place, and, and, and God, th th there is a place of God's choosing for his people. And in this season, he has chosen our homes to move in. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, some of your homes will never be the same again. Some of your lives will never be the same again. Some of your families will never be the same again. And it's going to be because of the power of the Holy Ghost. He tells them in the 13th verse, we see that they have come and they went up into the upper room place where Jesus told them to go. He told them, I want you to get to the place where, uh, uh, of my choosing. You get in the city and don't you leave until you are endued with power from on high. You get where I want you to be and you shut yourself in. You know, today we have a hard time being still for five minutes. And Jesus is allowing this time for us to do some thinking and reflecting. They were there in that room and they were praying. And, and, and we see in the first chapter that they were already on one accord. They continued with one accord, the Bible says. And like he did in the book of John, when he sent Peter and, and, and John to, 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 to the house to prepare for communion, now he has sent his apostles to the upper room to prepare for his coming. The coming of the Holy Ghost. They are there with one accord and they're praying. They continue praying, calling on God. Not just the apostles, but those who were gathered and, 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 and the gathering became 120. God can turn stuff upside down if you just give them a few people to work with. I believe here in this city of Stockton, someone asked the question, why can't the churches get along? You see, because they understand, the enemy understands when the churches begin to come together, this city will not be able to stand right side up anymore because the Holy Ghost power of the, the true and living God, when it hits this place and it begins to hit this church, the next play, thing that's going to happen is that there's going to be a spillover in the city. Wherever you are, let the Holy Ghost move and you'll see a spillover in your city. I believe that Stockton is primed for a revival. I believe God is going to move on every side of our city, touching our lost, 
bringing them home, moving in our ministries like he wants to. But we've got to prepare the place. He gets the people, the 120 who are gathered. And they're getting things ready. And they're continuing. They're continuing. They're doing what they've been sent to do because they're preparing for the power that is to come. New birth, we've not seen God's greatest manifestation of his power yet. We've seen some wonderful things, but we have not seen the greatest manifestation of the power of God that's going to hit New Birth Christian Center. Because when it hits New Birth Christian Center like it's supposed to, this little building's not going to be able to contain it. This three acres is not going to be able to contain what God is going to do, not just in New Birth Christian Center, but through New Birth Christian Center. You see, when you get the right place and you get the right people at the right time, a pouring out of God's power will take place. God said, I just, I just need you to get there and let me do what I do. I need you to trust that I am God and believe my word. And when you will dare to believe the word of God, you set yourself up for his manifested glory. You see, today we have big production and little power. You know, today for somebody to be able to say we had service, you've got to have little angels flying out of the air and smoke coming out of the ground and, 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 and this happening over here and this going on over there and everybody's looking everywhere because they've got to see something going on. And, but you see, we have big production and little power. When back then, it was total opposite. We had very little production. We had big power. Nothing special had to happen in service for the Holy Ghost to move. We didn't have to have this going on over here and this going on over there and that going on in that corner. All we needed was some people who would begin to stand up and declare, I'm here for no other reason but to see Jesus and they begin to agree. That's what I'm here for. That's when we had testimony service, y'all. They begin to agree that the Holy Ghost was moving. The preacher didn't have to tell us that Jesus was in the room. The preacher didn't have to tell us that Holy Ghost fire was happening at that moment. We believed it. We came ready for it and we received the Holy Ghost. presence and the power and the fullness of God coming into a building and touching a people and gripping hearts and changing lives in a moment because we were ready for it. You see, but today we have to be ready for production. Don't get me wrong. I love, I love rehearsed music. I love the song. And if you don't practice, you're about to mess something up pretty, pretty much. That's not what I'm saying. Have the best of everything you can have. Come with a spirit of excellence. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is don't put all of that above his presence. I'm not going to sacrifice any of those things for the presence of God. Why? Because today more than ever, I need to feel him. I need to feel his power. I want to feel his spirit. You see, when the presence of the Lord comes in, uh, the second chapter says on the day when, uh, when, 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 when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they're all there in one accord, in one place. They're thinking the same thing talking the same thing, rehearsing the same thing, and they had already been doing that. But suddenly there comes a sound. 
It's a sound from heaven that fills the house. The rushing mighty wind where they're sitting. They're sitting there and they're tarrying there and they're waiting on God. They're sitting there and they're praying there and nobody has to be this or nobody has to be that but all we want is the presence of God and God says now is my moment to step in. You see if you can begin to have prayer going in your house some of you need to get your home ready for a move of God. Well, so-and-so won't pray. Pray before they come. Pray while they're there and pray after they leave. There's power in prayer. Suddenly there comes a sound from heaven. It's a rushing mighty wind. It's not, it's not something that's, that, that's a small thing. The sound that comes from heaven changes everything. There is a sound that, 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 that heaven sends. Uh, 1 Kings 18, 41 talks about the sound. He said, tell him, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Get up, go eat, begin to celebrate because it's about to rain on your dry field. Some of you need to get up and celebrate because God is about to rain on your dry field. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. I, I hear the sound of more than enough for the harvest. I hear a sound of more than enough for my family. I hear a sound of more than enough for my ministry. I hear a sound of more than enough for the sick. Jesus has come to be everything you need and all you have to do is open up in the spirit and be Begin to listen for the sound of abundance and begin to declare by faith, I hear the sound of more than enough. There were 120 people there in that room, but when the sound of the Holy Ghost came in, they began to recognize that something was about to happen. The sound is announcing the presence of God. The sound is announcing that the king of glory has come into this place. The sound is announcing that God is about to move. They begin to worship God. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them. They, 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 they're looking, they're worshiping and they begin to see something. They hear something and then they see something. They hear the sound and they begin to open their eyes and he begins to manifest his glory to them and tongues like as a fire is now sitting upon each of them. My God. He's showing each of them what's about to happen in them. You see, God will allow something to rest on you. You see, when it's on you, it's for somebody else to see. They're sitting there. And tongues like as a fire is resting on them. That's the glory of God on you. You see, sometimes we don't know what to do because we don't know what's happening. When the glory of God begins to rest on you, don't you be afraid. How many times did Jesus come and speak peace to his disciples? When he was moving, as he was moving, he had to tell, oh, hold, hold on, hold on, don't, don't be afraid, it's me. I tell folk all the time, listen, if I break out in tongues, don't, 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 don't be afraid. It's, it, it's, it's the Holy Ghost thing. I'm not going to do it to scare you. But someone wrote a song that said, every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Whenever I feel the moving of God, I'm going to do something. I'm going to sing. I'm going to clap. I, you, you see, and if I'm riding in my car and I get to a stop sign and I got something good going on and I feel the presence of God, I can forget about the cars next to me because I'm about to have church somewhere. Why? Because I was that dead man who was brought back to life. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If any man be in Christ, 
He's a new creature. All things passed away. And all things, behold, all things become new. Behold, you, you, you see, when you give your heart to God and, and, and you begin to transition and you begin to transform, you become something that has never existed before. Because death brings forth the new man. If any man be in Christ, Jesus said, you can't follow me except you pick up your cross every day, deny yourself and follow after me. Picking up the cross means I've crucified my flesh. I've got to die to Charlie. Charlie was a messed up dude. He was a mean dude. I had to die to him and I've got to die to him every day. Because let the right circumstances come. He can pop up any moment. If I've not died to him. But Paul said. Remember. If you are in Christ. You are a new creature. You are someone who has never existed before. Some of you need to tell yourself, I am someone who has never existed before because today I am in Christ Jesus. You begin to think about yourself differently. You begin to move differently and talk differently, act differently go different places why because you are now in Christ Jesus I'm a child of the king no I don't act like that anymore why I'm a child of the king I'm an heir to the throne I can't act like I used to act somebody said well you don't act like that because you saved yes exactly I don't act like that because I die to the flesh every day. I choose to die to the flesh every day. Why? Because I'm going to be a new creature every day. All things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing the trespasses unto them. Now, then we are ambassadors for Christ. They should see him when they see us. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Somebody needs to repeat that right now. I am the righteousness of God. Go ahead and repeat it again. I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. Romans 12, 1 through 2. I beseech you, my brother because of the mercies of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God. That is your reasonable or rational service. Then he tells us to be transformed. Don't be conformed, but you be transformed by the making new, by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yes, I've got something to prove. Somebody say, you ain't got nothing to prove. Being say, I do have something to prove. I've got to prove that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and come to glorify the Father. I do have something to prove. There are people looking at me. There are people watching you. This new man that has risen every day and every day that I live, I've got to live to be more like my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We used to sing a song, I want to be more like you. I want to be a vessel that you love through. I want to be a vessel that you move through. 
I want to be a vessel that you touch through. I want to be more like you. I'm thankful for those who have chosen to be with us this Sunday morning. All the friends and family who've let me know, let us know you're watching. I'm glad for that. Blesses me most are the testimonies we're beginning to receive of those who have accepted the Lord as Savior of their lives. And they're changing their minds about some things and they want to run hard after Christ. If that's you this morning, and I know that there's somebody that's watching right now, you've made a decision, you've heard the word. You've made a decision to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to say this prayer with me, Lord Jesus. I come to you a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. Wash me. Make me clean. I thank you for a new mind. I thank you for a new heart. I thank you that I'm a new man or woman in you, Jesus. You are my God and I am your child for the rest of my days. I thank you and give you glory. And from this moment, I live for you forever. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now, if you've prayed that prayer, and you've received the Lord Jesus into your heart, let us know. And if there's someone who needs prayer beyond this point, there are ministers who are available to pray with you. If you'd like to be contacted for prayer, just let us know. But it's not just our prayer, but also our belief that there's been something that's been said or done that's been a blessing to you. We want you to stay with us as we continue worship and come back again through the week and every Sunday as we turn our living rooms into our life rooms. Lord bless you. We love you. Show the love of the Lord.
thank you for partnering with us in worship today. Our prayer is, is that you receive something that has encouraged you to keep the faith, that you're inspired to draw closer to Jesus, and that you will endeavor to be salt and light in a dark world. Bow your heads with me in prayer. Father, we thank you for this gathering. We thank you that your spirit met us here today. We thank you that lives were changed forevermore. God, we give you all the worship. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.